I welcome you again to this episode of Physical Geography, where today we are going to talk about wave deposition. Wave deposition takes place take place when swash is more powerful than backwash. So meaning that uh, when swash is more powerful, it will bring a lot of roads toward the coast. And when it reaches there, the backwash becomes too weak. It will let those roads to be deposited at the coast. So therefore, this will lead to deposition. So meaning that the eh, position of wave takes place when backwash is too weak, so that it cannot be able to bring back the roads toward the sea. Then today we are going to see wave depositional landforms. Normally we have very many wave depositional landforms, but today we are going to talk about the most important wave depositional features. Let's start by the position of feature number one. We have a beach. A beach is a gentle sloping surface produced by accumulation of sand along the coast. So meaning that a wave can deposit sand particles or sand deposits at the coast and this will lead to the formation of a gentle sloping surface. Such a gentle sloping surface is called a beach. Let's look at different types of beach. Normally we have three main types of beach. We have a bay beach. This is formed when material are deposited at the head of a bay due to wave deposition. So meaning that this is a bay. This is a bay. This is a bay. Remember that eh? here we have water. This is the sea water. And just under like you know, a bay is a part of water entering into the run. So meaning that eh, when a wave brought sand deposits here at the head of this bay, and also at the head of this bay, when those sand accumulate and forming a gentle sloping surface, this will lead to the formation of a bay beach. So therefore, a bay beach is a beach which is formed at a head of a bay due to wave deposition. Let's go to the type number two, sub type number two. We have a barrier beach. A barrier beach is a long ridge of sand running parallel to the coast and separated it from, separated from it by a lagoon. So meaning that uh, this is a beach which is formed when the ridge of sun running parallel to the coast. So meaning that uh, this is the coast. This is the coast and wave can bring a wave a wave can bring a wave can bring the materials and it deposit them before reaching to the coast. And this ridge made of sand deposits is referred to as a barrier beach. So meaning that uh, it will lead to the formation of a lagoon. This is a lagoon. So meaning that this, the water from the sea, the water, the, this water from the sea is separated from this one. And therefore, the one which has been formed here as the result of this, uh, this barrier beach, it will lead to the formation of a lagoon. So therefore, this is a lagoon lake. So let's go to the type number three. Type number three is a storm, is a storm beach. When you talk of a storm beach, it is formed, this is formed when a storm wave throws the material beyond the normal high, high tide level. So meaning that when a strong wave is coming toward the coast, it will throw those roads or materials transported by, by itself toward a normal high tide level. And this will lead to the formation of a storm beach where those sun deposits will deposit at a high tide level so that this storm beach is formed. Let's go to the feature number two. 
Remember that we are talking about wave deposition of feature or wave deposition or landforms. So the first landform is a beach. Then the second one is a sandbar. A sandbar are those, those are formed when sand depositional materials join the two headland. It is formed, they are formed when sand depositional materials join the two headland. So meaning that a wave can bring a wave can bring sand depositional materials here. Here, those are sand depositional materials. And those sand depositional materials are brought by a wave so that they can even join the two headlands. This is a headland and this is a headland. Remember in the previous episode when we were talking about different features that are formed as a result of wave erosion where we talked about this headland. So meaning that when the sand deposit is going to, to join the two headlands, this, is for, this will lead to the formation of a sandbar. Therefore, this is the meaning of this sandbar. Let's go to the feature number three. Feature number three is wrong shore bar or offshore bar. An offshore bar is a bar which develops along a very gentle sloping coast and running parallel to it. So meaning that uh, here we have the coast. This is the coast. And wave can bring the materials and deposit them here. But when they are deposited here, this must be parallel to the coast. Or it runs toward the coast. And those depositional material will lead to the formation of a gentle slope, a gentle sloping, gentle sloping coast. And therefore, such a feature is called an offshore bar or a longshore bar. Let's go to the feature number three. Sorry, the feature number four. The feature number four is a, a spite. A spite, spites, spite is a raw ring deposit of sand which develop at the coast. Is a raw ring deposit of sand which develop at the coast. So meaning that uh, the wave can bring sun weathered particles and deposit them at the coast, and this will result into the formation of low ring deposits or low ring gentle sloping at the coast. Therefore, that is what we call a spite. Let's look at different types of spites. Normally, we have the three main types of spite. Number one, we have a sand spite. Sand spite are formed when wave deposit material. When the sand, sorry, they are formed when wave deposit material obliquely. So meaning that when sand deposit material in an oblique way, you look at here, in an oblique way, this will lead to the formation of a sand spite. Remember, you remember the oblique line, how it looks like. So therefore, this will lead to the formation of a sun and a sun spite. Let's look at another type. Another type is a hook despite. This hook despite is otherwise called curve despite. Are formed when sand deposits accumulate in linear form with one end attached to the, to the mainland. So it means this one when, this, when a wave deposit material, but in a curved way, in a curved, in a curved way. So those depositional materials that have the shape of a curve or that cave like this, this one is called a hooked or a, a curved spy. Let's go to the type number three. We have a caspate spite. A caspate spite. They are formed when the curved spite join the two headlands, hence enclosing the lagoon. So meaning that eh, this caspate spite is formed when curved, when this curved, when this hooked or curved spite encloses, when it encloses, when it encloses the lagoon, when it encloses the lagoon. So meaning that, oh, when it encloses the two headland, it encloses, 
it, it joins the two headlands and this will lead to the formation of Aragon. So it means this caspate spite, it separates the seawater, it separates the seawater from the bay water and this will lead to the formation of Aragon. So such a type of lake is called Aragon Lake. Aragon Lake is a lake which is formed when sand deposits enclose the bay when sand deposit close the bay and to separate the water of a bay and the water of the main sea water. And this will lead to the formation of Aragon. So let's go to the feature number five. Feature number five is a caspate foreran. A caspate foreran, this develop when Aragon enclosed by caspate spite is enclosed by vegetation. So meaning that uh, Remember when we were talking about caspate spite, we have said that a caspate spite is formed when a uh, curved, curved spite or a uh, hooked spite join the two headland and hence enclosing, enclosing lagoon. Here we have, this is, this one, this one is a caspate, caspate spite, caspate spite. So meaning that uh, when this caspate spite is colonized by vegetation cover, so those are vegetation cover. So when it is colonized by vegetation cover, it will lead to the formation of a caspate foreran. So therefore, we can say a caspate foreran, it is a wave depositional feature that is formed when a lagoon is encrossed by a caspate spite. When lagoon encrossed by a caspate spite is colonized by vegetation cover. And therefore, this will lead to the formation of the caspate spike. Let's go to the feature number six. Feature number six, we have tomboro. Tomboro is a wave deposition of features made of sand that connect Iceland to the mainland. So meaning that eh, when you look at this diagram, this is the mainland and this is the Iceland. This is the mainland and this is the, main, this is the Iceland and this is the mainland. So meaning that eh, a wave can bring deposition, can bring the rolls and deposit them here. So wave can bring the, the materials and deposit here. Another wave can bring the materials and deposit here. So that they will make, they will make a depositional feature which seems like this. And this depositional feature will connect this mainland and this Iceland. So therefore, it looks like that one. So when you talk of a tomorrow, is a wave depositional feature made of sand that connect the Iceland to the mainland. Let's look at the marshes and the mud flats. Marshes and mud flats, it is the same f a wave depositional feature. When you talk of marshes and mud flats, here they say those are areas water edge deposits normally find in a caspate foreland. So meaning that when in a caspate foreland there exist a water edge deposits, so this will lead to the formation of, of uh, marshes and mud flat. So therefore, those are wave depositional features. As we said in starting, as it has been explained, we have beach as the first wave depositional feature. We have a sandbar as the second one. We have longshore bar or offshore bar as the third one. We have spites as the fourth one. We have caspate foreland as the fifth one. And we have a tomorrow as the seventh, sixth, sixth one. And finally we have seventh one, which is marshes and mud flat. So therefore those are features that are formed as a result of wave deposition. Thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe.